Hi, my name is Venu Bhagavatala. I'm from the Advanced Circuit Design Group at Samsung Semiconductors. Today, in this short presentation, I will be going over some of the fundamental concepts in wireless transceiver circuits and architectures. The modern mobile phone contains multiple radios. You have radios for Bluetooth, which uh, could be used to pair your mobile phone with a wireless headset. You have Wi-Fi radios to connect to a router and get uh, access to the high-speed internet as well. However, the key function of a cell phone is to build a radio which can transmit and receive to a remote base station which could be several tens of miles away. The set of rules with which this radio communicates with the base station is known as a standard. These standards have evolved over time. The second generation or 2G standard focused on delivering high quality, low bandwidth voice communication between the mobile device and the base station. Whereas the more recent 4 and 5G standards have focused on delivering high speed download to deliver more data and services on the mobile device. To shed some light um, on the amount of research and development that has gone into putting these mobile phones in our pocket, in this slide I've shown, in this slide I list some of the first references to these different technologies in papers presented at the ISSCC. You can see that the first reference to 2G, GSM, came in 1990, that's approximately 30 years ago. Mobile phones developed and manufactured in 2020 still contain radios that support the 2G standard. This is testament to the longevity um, of and the robustness of these wireless technologies. To reach this point, there has been a lot of collaboration between industry and academia because being always connected is a very difficult engineering problem. So with this high level overview, now I'll go into the details of uh, the transceiver. So this, is a very, uh, this block diagram describes the transmit and receive chain, which can broadly be classified into three major domains. You have a digital system. By digital, I refer to the fact that it processes bits of information, zeros and ones. You have an analog subsystem, which interacts with the antenna. This deals with continuous time voltages and currents and a mixed signal sys subsystem comprising of a A to D and D to A converter to interface these two. In any transceiver built on a mobile device, power consumption is a very important design metric. Therefore, these, the entire transceiver chain is partitioned into multiple chips where each chip is implemented in a semiconductor, te semiconductor technology that is most suited for minimizing the power consumption. The digital subsystem, which comprises of billions of transistors, tends to migrate to the most advanced technology known, so that it can take advantage of the fine feature size, uh, operate at a faster switching frequency, you can pack more transistors and functions while reducing power consumption. The front-end component, the front-end analog subsystem, which comprises of the LNA, the, the low noise amplifier, the power amplifier, the switches, tend to be implemented in RF-friendly semiconductor technologies such as the 3 phi technologies. At the interface between the digital subsystem and the analog front-end lies what is known as a multi-mode RFIC. Multi-mode refers to the fact that it needs to support all the wireless standards as well as all wireless frequencies. At its heart, it is an analog chip, but it requires a large digital component in order to compensate for the non-idealities intru uh, introduced by the circuit. Most innovation in the field of wireless circuit design involves improving the noise and linearity of the signal chain. On a receive path, all the transistors, resistors add noise, in the uh, add noise to the signal. Sensitivity is a metric defined by the standard which specifies what is the minimum noise, which is what is the minimum signal that the receiver should be able to demodulate, demodulate accurately. The noise added by the receive chain is characterized by a parameter known as the noise figure. The noise factor is defined as the ratio of the SNR at the output and the SNR at the input. 
In an ideal receive chain which adds absolutely no noise, the noise factor is 1 which corresponds to a noise figure of 0 dB. A higher noise figure implies that the receiver is adding more noise. Depending upon the sensitivity requirement placed by the standard and the minimum SNR requirement placed by the demodulator, it is possible to calculate the noise figure that the receive chain needs to be designed to in order to meet the bit error rate requirement. One of the key contributors to noise degradation in both the transmit and the receive chain is the oscillator. In an ideal oscillator, the frequency spectrum should, should look like a single tone at the oscillation frequency. In an ideal oscillator, the zero crossings of the oscillator should appear with at an exact time period. However, noise in the oscillator results in random fluctuations in the zero crossing also known as jitter in the time domain. In the frequency domain, this translates to a spreading in the frequency spectrum of the oscillator. The phase noise is defined at, phase noise is defined at a specific offset frequency from the carrier in units of decibel per carrier. It is the energy integrate ener the noise energy at an offset frequency compared to the total energy at the carrier frequency. In this slide, we are going to discuss the impact of oscillator phase noise on the receive performance. One of the fundamental facts of wireless design is that the medium is shared. It is not a dedicated medium like in a wired line transmitter. As a result, the receive, a receiver should be capable of handling blocker signals or large unwanted signals that fall in band with its desired signal. In this slide, I have modeled the receiver with a single mixer taking two inputs. The RF input comprises of two signals. The desired signal is, is the black rectangle and the undesired signal which is actually stronger than the desired signal is the red triangle. The oscillator signal is, uh, is called LO and um, it has a finite phase noise. Here we can see that the desired signal mixes with the carrier and is down converted to baseband. In addition, the oscillator phase noise down converts the blocker signal onto the same frequency band as the desired signal. At the output, the blocker and the desired signal are indistinguishable resulting in a noise degrad SNR degradation of the system. This, con this phenomena is also known as reciprocal mixing. On the transmit side, it is easier to visualize the impact of oscillator phase noise. I have modeled the transmitter with a brick wall frequency response. If the oscillator was a single tone, then the frequency response of the upconverted signal would be same as that of the input. However, in the presence of finite phase noise, the output spectrum of the transmitter also spreads. When viewed at the output, phase noise appears as transmit noise at offset frequency from the desired uh, from the carrier. This could swamp out a weak receive signal which is operating at that offset frequency. With this brief introduction to noise, I'll now move on to linearity. The linearity of uh, transmit of any amplifying block can easily be modeled using a power series expansion. Here we say that the output signal yt is a weighted sum of the, sig of the input xt and higher order terms of xt as well. A simple technique to model the nonlinearity of the amplifiers is to use a power series expansion where the output signal yt is a weighted sum of xt and higher orders of the input signal xt. In this, the, the first term alpha 1 corresponds to the linear gain of the amplifier. Alpha 2 refers to second order distortion which is a cause of noise figure degradation in direct conversion receivers and alpha 3 is referred to as a third order distortion which commonly affects both the transmit and the receive chain. 
I will focus on third order distortion in this presentation. The way to model third order distortion is to consider the two tone response of an amplifier. In this experiment, we apply two signals x1 and x2 at frequencies omega1 and omega2 to the amplifier. In a linear system, the frequency components at the input of the amplifier and the output of the amplifier should remain the same. However, in a nonlinear system, mixing products or intermodulation products between the intermodulation between the two input frequencies results in multiple new harmonic signals to be generated, new frequency components to be generated at the output. In this table, I show all the frequency components that would be generated as a result of intermodulation between omega 1 and omega 2. Several of these terms lie at very high or very low frequencies and can be easily filtered out. However, the component that is most detrimental to the system performance is 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 and 2 omega 2 minus omega 1 which lies very close to the desired signal and therefore cannot be filtered out. In transmitters, the metric that captures the effect of third order distortion is the adjacent channel leakage ratio. In this slide, I have modeled the transmit signal as four equally spaced tones. We can see each of these tones will intermodulate with each other. I have broken this down into three sets, Fn into Fn plus 1, Fn into Fn plus 2 and Fn into Fn plus 3. We can see that intermodulation between these four tones results in a spreading of the transmit signal. In cellular systems, the adjacent band might be allocated to another user, therefore there is a very stringent spec on the amount of leakage that any signal can drop into an adjacent band. On the receive path, the way to visualize this, we need, in order to visualize this, we have to go back to our initial assumption that the medium is shared. It is possible that there are two blocker signals at frequency offsets such that which cause the intermodulation of the two blocker signals to fall in band with the desired signal. This again results in SNR degradation. I will be presenting a full length tutorial of, with this material at the ISSCC 2020 and in this tutorial I will build on these fundamental concepts of noise and linearity and show how this were how circuits have been designed in different cellular standards in order to enhance performance. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me.